Good evening, everybody. It is Saturday, and Saturday means that we've got some die party action to get down. This time we are playing Blood Juice, which is uh Would you say it's more 3.5 than 2.0 right now, Graham? Pretty sure it's more 3.5. Custom D&D not, match. Not, not important. Not important. It's it's custom. It's brand new. It's a whole new rule set. Which I'm still calling it D&D because it's easy to explain to people who don't understand what it is. So, yay for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so... um. Yeah, uh, this is the second week of Blood Juice. We've uh, we've been doing this for a little bit now. The first season is over on the YouTube channel. If you want to go check it out, it's all there. Blah blah blah. Uh, let me introduce the players today. Uh, first up, we got Wreckage. Who we playing Bolfar? I have laryngitis. Wow, I did not know that. So expect uh, Bolfar so to be broody and silent today. Um, <coughs> Yep. Uh, and uh, next we have Engelard, uh, Jacob playing Engelard. Yo. Yo. And uh, I'll be playing Walzer today, as per normal. I will also be uh, playing Pike, which is Walzer's animal uh, companion. And Graham will also be playing Pike. And also being the game master as well. That was a weird introduction. Yeah, the idea being is that, you know, Walzer has a tele telepathic link with Pike, and so he can very easily tell him what he wants him to do. Otherwise, otherwise, I would be playing Pike specifically, and he would not have any control over it. But Yeah, so, wow. Uh, sorry about all that. Uh, there's someone who's died, apparently, near me. Anyway, um, so, yeah, basically, we're just going to be co-oping some... <laughs> Some poor animal. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, I'm, I'm excited to get into this. Graham, why don't you explain what happened up until now and what we'll be doing this session? Well, uh, why don't you tell us what happened last time? All right, so, wow. well, all yeah. of us... Um, we, we got uh, summons by um, uh, Thistleborough to go and speak with the, I don't remember the name of them, but the Dwarven people who live near the, uh... Vale. Right here, near the Vale, Lord, Lord, yeah. So... Lord Ragnar. Lord Ragnar. I got it right here in this book, right now. Um, and, uh, when we went to the meeting with Lord Ragnar, uh, both myself and, uh, Engelard, that is, from outside the Vale, or the Heroes of the Vale, as we've been called now, uh, we went there, and then the sort of encampment, I guess you'd call it, or town. The, the stronghold. The stronghold. Uh, Gilvac stronghold was, uh, came under attack by uh, a goblin army, sort of, or at least an organization. Yeah, not, organization. Of some sort, um, who all have like a red hand sort of put somewhere on their armor, on their body. Um, we met up with uh, Bolvac, Bofar. Yeah, Boffa, sorry. I don't know what they're called. Bovac. Um, yeah, we met up with Boffa. Bovac dwarf, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, my, my favorite dwarf. Yeah, we, we met up with uh, Boffa, um, who who sort of owns a sort of piece of land slash cellar thing that we sort of started clearing out, which happened to have quite a few number of goblins in it. Um, and due to uh, a lot of intimidation roles and... Uh, sort of fighting and sort of exploring, we managed to sort of uh, push all the goblins into one conveniently located empty space. <laughs> and we uh, managed to route them to a point where we killed them off and captured the leader for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where we left off last time, I guess. Yeah. So I assume that we're picking up straight away from where we left off. Straight where we left off, Buffar tackled the leader goblin, who was wielding a hammer. I had battle axe. To a sleeper battle hold axe. that you had yep. declared him unconscious. Yes, he so. is now unconscious and limp, and goblins aren't particularly heavy. So Buffar, I pick him up and I rush him to a medic because he's bleeding, and I want him alive. I can actually okay, do well, some medical stuff on him. Slow down. Yeah. Stop him from doing that. From right dying. now, you guys are in the conveniently located empty space. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So, Graham... A bunch of goblin, goblin corpses around that Pike is just kind of nibbling at. Cause, yeah. Well he's, well, he's full now because he ate a full goblin at the first one he met. And, and whatever killed. meat that the Dwarven people gave him as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, if he's, if he's bleeding out or anything like that, I can actually assist there. Um, you can. I yeah. can, yeah. Um, so Buffer see. doesn't know that. He's throwing this guy over his shoulder and he's already trying to book it. Uh, Buffer, wait, 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 wait. Where's he going? Um, I, I like grab him and like put him down. I can, I can stabilize him before you move him. That'll make it worse. So, but let me do my thing. Trust me. All right. Okay. So um, let's see here. So uh, you have a healing skill. This is going to be a D20 plus twelve. No, 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 no. See, and healing is intelligence and intuition based. Yeah. So I got um, yeah. So mine is so plus it's... two. So it says this is going to be, ten. yeah, but it's all. This is going to be an intuition-based check, though. Just trying to figure out. All right, so plus nine then. You're trying to, yeah, intuit what's wrong. Twenty. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. Passed. All right. Uh, what kind of what kind of tool specifically are you using, though? I am like, what using. Are you, uh, he's bleeding. Yeah. On the side. I actually have a healing kit on the back of Pike. There's also an arrow sticking out of his side. Yeah, um, so I, I'm going to use the healing kit and maybe like a dagger from one of the goblins. It doesn't matter where I got it from. Because um, I assume there's one lying around. I mean, these are fucking goblins. So. Dave's not saying anything. Dave, you just completely cut out for like 20 seconds. Well, that's weird. I'm like right here, so. Still talking. There's no speaking. That's really strange. Skype! Um, so basically, uh. Uh, uh, let me just, there we go, we'll turn that off. Um, yeah, so I've turned that off. Um, so basically I'm going to grab the healing kit off the back of Pike that I have. Um, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to take a dagger from one of the corpses of goblins, because I assume there is one. Sure. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to worry about doing any sort of, you know, uh, making sure that the blade is like, you know, hot or anything like that. I'm just going to cut the dagger head, uh, the arrowhead out of his, uh, you said it was in chest or shoulder? Like, where was it? It's in his side. It's in his ribcage. Okay. Well, I'm just going to sort of cut it out. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, uh, let's see. Is there any torches around? Yep. Um, I'm going to cauterize it. Okay. Remember you guys were carrying torches yep. at one point. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, Pike did have one in his mouth at one point, but I assumed he dropped it to start eating, so... Um, to run more, yeah. Yeah, uh, so I pick it up, and I'm going to cauterize it, and then I'm going to... Um... You do know that uh, you do realize two of the goblins, goblin leader's ribs are broken. Okay. All right. I don't think I can do anything about that from the outside, at least. Probably not. Just, you know, fun facts for everyday life. Yeah. Um, so he is unconscious? Yes. Well, in that He's case, in, I'm going to put him, him on the back of Pike, and after I've healed him, and I guess we'll, I'll turn to uh, Balfour and I'll say, uh, where do you want to take this gentleman? Oh, this thing, rat. Stunned silence from the party. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suggest that we take him to um. If he's stable right now, we can at least get some more treatment there. Well, uh, Graham, before we leave, can I take a look at this hole that they dug through the wall? Yep. Which was, um, for everyone who's looking in, it's uh, just over here. Yeah, on the map. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's about a 10 foot wide hole that appeared to have been bored through the side of the hill. Bored? Uh, like, was it like. With shovels, the pickaxes, like, is there, like, stuff littered mm. around that shows that? Or was it caused by some sort of creature, maybe? There's a lot of debris. Debris? So, okay. something like that, yeah. Okay, uh, maybe this is a good um, role for uh, Engelard, I think. Sure. Yeah. What do you got? Um, what do you want so, to use? All right. So, rolling to check out the debris, then. Um, sorry. Somebody was talking to me that second ago. Yeah, something right, so, like an archaeolog archaeological one, or maybe even like, um, you said you had like an architectural role or something? Well, yes. Yeah, I, I oh. basically want to see how they managed to get through this wall. 
architecture won't work, but um, yeah. I assume so. Um, would no, no, not carpentry. That doesn't make sense. I'm not sure if Engelard has something for this. Um, geology would kind of maybe tangentially help, but um, if, if you think it's a cre if you think it's a creature, monster lore. Yeah. Um, I, I'm thinking they might have like I don't know I don't know anything about I don't monsters, know. so I'm thinking like some sort of boring worm or something like that. I don't know. Because it seems pretty know, big for the amount of goblins that were down here. So true. Well, yeah, I meant that guy could I do engineering? Is really boring. Or no? What was that? I was thinking maybe engineering tangentially at least. Oh, if you want to see it was like a machine. Yeah. 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 You can check. All right. Number twenty plus fifteen. No, it's probably twenty-five. 25. Um, it looks. No, you don't think it was a machine. Definitely not. It's, it's, it's much. It's much too rough. It's not, not a machine. It's much too smooth. Smooth. Interesting. Yeah. All right, maybe a monster hmm. will check or something. Yeah. Since I'm knowing you, since you know, I would be looking over for anything that he could possibly um, figure out to be. Yeah. So my monster was also plus 15. Just for everyone playing at home, um, when we do a skill check like this, the actual uh, DC is 20. Uh, so, and the skills are sort of based off uh, character stats plus skill level. So whenever we roll higher than 20, it's basically a pass. But, you know, that yep. might not give us well the information that we need. So. What was that other lore? Uh, was that other role monster lore? Yeah, monster yes. lore. Definitely wasn't a monster either. Once again, too smooth. <gasps> mm. I mean, the only thing I could do then is get one last tangent for um, uh, geo. What is it? Geology. What's Fine. the uh? What's the hills like outside of the wall? What is the the thing that they bore through? Well, if you were to walk through, there's like a tunnel, at least like twenty foot tunnel. Yeah. Okay. And then you're, you're in, you're back out into the you know, hill country. So they dug ramp. Was it dirt or was it rock? Um, some both. Okay. Hmm. Ram, I would like to pick up uh, pieces of the wall okay. that have been destroyed, and I want yep. to uh, examine the side that was facing the hill and look at it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> what do I? Is, it appears. Oh, Sorry. Is so it the, Yeah. So the all of the wall is is a dark stone kind of um <coughs> blocks of stone that have been piled together. Uh you're talking about the you're talking about the wall that's across from the hole? No, I'm talking about the wall that was destroyed by the hole. So like whatever was, was facing the at, like the dirt on the outside sort of thing. I'm just inspecting it for I don't know. Right. Well, I, I will tell you, all of the debris is, is not, is like in the room, uh -huh. first, first of all. Okay. And uh, there is, I mean, rubble from the from the wall that was on this face. Uh-huh. Um, now, can you tell me? It's, it's not like scorched or anything, if that's what you're after. It's not scorched, it's not uh, like riddled with... Uh, it just, just appears cuts. like it crumbled. It just crumbled. Was it blasted in wood sort of thing? Does it look like it's like... Something, something like that. Okay. How is its current structural integrity? Can I... Uh, is it still hard as it should be? That would be an architecture check. Well, I mean, can I crush it in my hand or can't I? Oh, no. The, like, I mean, the, like the larger bits? No. Yeah, they're still stone is what, you know. Still solid. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Well, I can't make heads or tail of this. Uh, Buffalo, yeah, where um, do you want to take this fucking goblin? All right, we're gonna take him up, and we're gonna, well, we're gonna tie him up first. We're gonna take him up uh, to be interrogated. We're gonna find somebody who speaks Goblin. I'm sure somebody somewhere can interrogate this piece of rat trash. I sort of smirk at the thought of someone going out of their way to learn Goblin. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Uh, so then I guess we would, would sort of make our way back out. Um, oh, oh, wait, the, the money on the ground. Just a rough estimate. How much do you think it is? Uh, oh, let's see. Because there was gold in a bag at some point. Yep, he had a sack and one of the arrows ripped the bag open. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, goodness gracious.
And I assume this is from this crypt or this this underground part. So most of it would be Boffar's money. Well, uh, you do know all of the money is not Beachcrestian in yep. in make. It is dwarven. Yeah, so it would be from this place then. So maybe it's more like just collect it up and give it to Boffa. Okay. Uh, yeah. Actually, while you're doing that, <clears throat> I'm going to be like, uh, you and the beastie stay here and watch the hole. I'm going to go up to the, uh, and, and direct a squad down here to guard it. We can't let more of them get in. Uh, but when the squad comes, they'll relieve you and you can follow us. Uh, okay, sure. I guess that I'll stay sense. down here as well. I want to see if I can figure out anything about the hole. Sure, and maybe take a couple extra looks at that secret place thing with all the stuff. And don't open that big scary door. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will take in, in, in t all tied up the goblin leader back to the dwarven leadership, wherever they're sort of uh, organizing, mounting their defense. Yeah, which, which way do you go? Do you go back to the secret door? In the crypt or up to the food storage? Well, uh, I, uh, from my knowledge of the layout of the level above, mm -hmm. right, uh, was the, would I know if the food storage area was not where the fighting was happening? Because the fighting wasn't happening at the secret entrance. I definitely want to come in behind the lines, so to speak. Um, <laughs> then wouldn't it right. be best if we all went together, if you're going to be fighting? No, I'm not going to be fighting. That's the point. Gonna avoid all that. Yeah. As far as you know, you didn't see any goblins on the upper floor at all. Okay, so they were. <clears throat> they never made it through. Is the point? At least in this. At least in this house. Yeah. All right. Well, would either exit be closer to where I believe command? Probably, probably the food storage area will be closer to the central hub. All right. I'll. I'll <coughs> excuse me. I'll head out that way then. Okay. Meanwhile, what happens back in the basement? Uh. Oh. I fucking just... <laughs> I start asking Pike about, like, you know, was it really that good to eat those goblins? You know, that sort of shit. Like, just basically making chit-chat with him. Um, um, I'm going to continue to examine the whole, um, I'll say it's a flavor thing, but I do want to make a, ge a geology roll to see, um... Damn, I just just did tangent to... skills. Shit. <laughs> oh, Yeah. That's kind of my thing. Then that would be the role. Wow. Geology. Rocks and shit. Yep. That's why I'm expecting, but definitely rocks on this side. Stone made from the <clears throat> stone built from the you know, that's uh that's what the what the walls are made of. Nothing out of the ordinary there. Um I'm not sure what else I can give you for geology, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would I be able to um tell oh. how just how much force it would take to um, smash this to op to break this wall, like what like what it appears to be. It's uh it's sturdy dwarven craftsmanship, so a lot. Hmm. I must have really wanted more, to get more than, in more, then. more than like sledgehammers or something. Hmm. All right. What's in the uh, the room south of the conveniently located empty space? <laughs> Gonna head down there. Yeah, I'll just sort of poke around while there's. That's fine. Happening. It. it, it it appears to be chambers of some sort. There's a there's a oaken chest with a padlock that has been hacked open. Okay. Is the pad um, is the chest open or is it shut? Yeah, it's hanging open. Is there anything in there? A uh, few spare items of a clothing. Uh, there's a hammer in war hammer in here. Interesting. Uh, Can I take a look at the make and type of that war hammer? Sure. Uh, let's take a look here. I'm guessing that's weaponsmithing. Yep. Yeah, so, 13. Alright. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a great craftsmanship. Is it, the, is it kind of almost like heirloom quality craftsmanship? Um, no. Okay. Um, but it, but it, it's dwarven made, though. Yeah, that interesting. Helps. Is it a, is it like a one-handed hammer? Like, what are we dealing with here? Yeah. Like, is it double-sided? Yeah. One-handed, one-handed hammer. Okay. Uh, well, mm. what about anything else in the room? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fucking just start robbing this place. So. Um. Sure, sure. Um, uh, that's really all that's in here. Um, there's a kind of a little smaller room, a little closet that's or like uh, that's got like some like uh, manacles, like ball and chain 
arm fetters, that sort of thing for mm. prisoners. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Um, I'm gonna go to the um, the secret lab. I guess the strange secret lab. Okay. Now that I basically figure out anything I can figure okay. out from the wall. Already leaving your post. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Well, so, that's fine. I, I got um, the post. It's yeah. Okay. Yeah, that. I mean, I was just here to look at it. He was the one who was told us to keep, keep at his post. I know, I know. So I'm just, um, mostly I'm just going to go in, poke my head, to see what's in there. So you recall this, the first room right here that's got the little squiggle next to it mm. on the map? Yeah. Uh, it's covered in, like, parchment and papers. Um, and then the larger room inside is just nothing but trash debris. I'm curious, mm. Graham. Like, this is yeah. a secret lab, right? Apparently. So, is there any, like, clear indications of, like, maybe there used to be a doorway here that's been bricked up to look like it wasn't a doorway from the outside? Well, I would have to, well, I would roll that. Yeah, obviously. Because, I mean, it I'm does seem curious. weird that the, that the only way to, to get in was basically crawling through. Yeah. So, I mean, would I be able to roll? No, I, yeah. I think that'd be an architecture, honestly. Yeah, sure, go ahead. All right, I believe that's still a plus 15. Fishing for that twenty to get it up, huh? <laughs> no, I no, I'm so I'm little. I'm just trying to recall for myself all my different roles. Yeah. yeah. Everything's fifteen uh, for you. That's fucking nutters, man. Yeah, that is intelligence. So that's what a lot of his skills are based on. Yeah, sure. Yep. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very astute observation, very astute idea, Dave. That's exactly what it looks like, Angelard. Um, would I be able to tell? Hmm. I guess, I guess if I went basically almost like knocking on the walls. Would I, or something, uh, something a little bit more, um, you know, fancy. Be able to figure out where this door would would have would have been, or where. Um, I assume it's probably just don't... like a giant archway or something like that. But one side is bricked up, and the other side isn't. So it's kind of. Or like... something. Yeah, I, you you doubt there was ever a door here, a physical door here to begin with. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, so... there, there that that leads to the strange secret lab. Uh, there is a door there. The door is intact, but it's you know it's iron bound wood and it's kind of hanging open. Hmm. All right. Um, I'm going to look at the. Uh, is there anything on the uh, parchments in the first Woodley room? Uh, yeah. There's basically writing on all of them. Very well. Funny. What's just by doing a quick glance over them? What would I um basically read off of them? Like. Anything particularly important, or is it just um, seem to be uh, just random stuff generally? Why don't you tell us? Oh, oh, that one pops up. <laughs> <sighs> All right, but the num, I guess the numbers are representing different papers. Yeah. All right. You don't have to read it All right, out so the all of it. You just can, you can skim it if you want. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're not that long. Oh, okay. Annoying grand like a whole fucking <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> The first one is um basically says, Well take a good look, lads. Would you kill him in his bed? Yep, that was all that was me alright. So what about you? Hey, I didn't want to be here. Th this business is supposed to be rough, just for a few days. I looked over the past sometimes. Pregnant women can no longer brawl. People that that drown while steam dipping will not spin into their clothes while interacting. Mermaid children can all can now can no longer play with ghosts. Can play ghost. Black is modest. Black is easy. Don't bother me. Okay. Uh, the second one says loneliness has nothing to do with how many people around you, but how many of them understand you. And then there's a drawing of a cat. I presume it's kind of shitty. <laughs> Why would you presume that? Because it's a shitty drawing of a cat. It, it just it says drawing of cat, but I'm just only assuming yeah, it's a shitty I know. drawing. I know it just says drawing of cat. <laughs> Three, and then the last paper just says leafy. Leonine Guardian, one of several in the terrace. This end of terrace house, a total of three of them above the windows. Uh, then there's, for some reason, a drawing of a dog's face on a man's body. Mm. A little bit weird. Some days are great. Some days are great. Some some days are not, a not, a not so great. But I'm doing the best I can. That that's all anyone can ask for. But most have a habit of pushing and pushing until they've gone too, too far and break. I'm not. I'm not who I want to be. You weren't there. Sexual abuse. That was beautiful. I don't disrespect how you identify. Absolute favorite. No one knows I'm. I breaking. I breaking in. I. All problems are real. No one has a problem. Problems and all problems are real. 
What they get is problems, just like dreams. Problems. The dog dies. There are multiples of papers like those. If you want to skim through all of them, we can do it later. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I'm just going to assume that whoever wrote these are slight. Is that is this insane? Well, he's probably been locked in a strange secret <coughs> lab for a while now. Code. <coughs> Excuse me. I have laryngitis. Oh, okay. I definitely didn't hear code in there at all. No. Uh, what? No. Come okay, on. so I'm I'm interested in what uh, Balfour's doing now. Yes, I'm. Whoa! You can't just redirect the scene. <laughs> You're not the fucking GM. What the hell was that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if this was my game and you said that, I would drag this scene on for twice as long just to spite you. No, that's okay. I was going to get there anyway. As far as you go up the stairs carrying this you know, limp goblin body, uh, did you did you leave the battle axe behind? Or you grabbed that too. Uh, his battle axe? Yeah. Um. Did it look significant? Like it might help in the investigation? Oh yeah. In let me way? let me do a thingy, and then you can fucking take it or not if you wanted to. Let's take a look. Like, uh, did it look like it had obvious markings? It, it, maybe. It, it, it looked dwarven in make from your eyes. So oh, so he probably took it from in here. Possible. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, then I. That he's inspecting it apparently in the past retroactively. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You remember a time when Walzer looked at it slightly and said something of import. <laughs> anyway, so did you take it or? <laughs> well, wait. Well, what is his? What's the result of his retroactive thing? He, I mean, he inspected it back when I was there. Yeah, look, looks dwarven in make. It looks of high quality. <clears throat> did it look like it's sort of old. like a matching set to that other one? Um, no, but maybe, you know, uh, to your eyes, Dwarven manufacturer looks a lot the same, so you're not sure. Really? As a, as a fucking, like, as a, as a blacksmith, you're saying that I'm just, like, completely oblivious to different types of makes and they metal both work look and stuff? Good. What do you want from me? <laughs> okay, uh. fair enough. Yep. All right, they both hey, look good. you know what? It really doesn't matter. <laughs> no, yeah, okay. no, I, in, in that case, um... Bafar's assumption would be that it belonged down in the basement and that therefore it has no relevance to the investigation. No, left it there. Fine. Yep. I would have put it back this? with the other one, but yeah. All right. Sure, sure. <clears throat> Done. Done. Uh, carrying the body up back to the, uh, basically back up to the Norfolk house um, kind of avenue where all of the houses in the stronghold have an avenue um, where all of the homes and businesses kind of sprout off from. Uh, kind of like a, a, a spoke in a wheel, uh, spokes on a wheel. Uh -huh. um, so you make your way back up to the to the avenue. Basically, all the women and children and uh, you know people who aren't soldiers or fighters um, kind of got out. And so the it's kind of bare around here. Basically, you see like um, you hear people kind of moving around. You hear footsteps to your left, footsteps to the right. You know, oh, what's that? What's that? You know, you're sure. Um, I assume you make your way back to the central hub. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, as you go, you know, you see a, you see a man dark across a, a hallway to your right. Oh, what's that? Is it definitely a man? Well, dwarf man. Okay. That was weird. I was like, what are those guys doing here? <laughs> but it's definitely a dwarf. Okay. Yeah, sure. Definitely a dwarf. Okay. Uh, Making your way back to the central hub, you find that there are a number of um, kind of soldiers kind of standing around looking at, uh, kind of looking at each other, what to do, kind of discussing, you know, how did they get in here, you know, um, you know, talking about each of them had, um, each of their basements were compromised, they all had ho holes bored through the walls. Oh, so everyone knows, that's good news. And everyone has cleaned their basements in the same amount of time that we cleaned ours, that's also good news. No, not all of them, some of them. Oh, some of them have, are already back from cleaning out their basements. Yeah, one of them also has a leader. Oh man, we got that is dressed similarly to yours. I'll be like, "Hey, we're starting a collection." I'll say, and I'll raise mine up slightly. Uh, yeah, they all uh, they all laugh at that and uh, high five. No, dwarves don't high five. <laughs> yes, of course they do. They low five. They low five. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Eventually, Lord Ragnai comes around a corner with uh, you know, a number of personal guards and retainers, um, and kind of basically walks through the central hub back to where his, his chambers are. 
and uh, you know he sees he stops and sees that you've got um, these two goblin leaders and he says and he says what do you what do you have that trash for uh, I'm going to find someone who speaks goblin and interrogate these bastards and he says let me know what you find out will do and he walks you know he you know looking looking to you and looking to the other dwarf um, you know Balak who's got uh, also the other goblin leader um, and he will walk through you all and go back to his his main chamber um, you see that his axe on his back has you know blood on it um, awesome yeah, and all of the all of the dwarves are kind of you know panting. You know they've they've seen some seen some business as well, mm. uh, just like you guys. It's at that time another dwarf comes out from uh, another another doorway, um, as well as a you know a squad of, of armored dwarves. Um, one of them, the main dwarf that comes out of that hallway, barks orders to the other ones, telling them to you know recover. Uh, you know go check the basements. You know they're go check the ones who haven't come back yet. Um, uh, one of the other dwarves kind of, uh, you know, they kind of start asking you around, like, you know, you, you know, they're all clear. All the ones that are out yet are already clear. Um, you know, and eventually they kind of start to go step their ways. Cause they're trying to return their women and children back to their homes. And, okay. uh, do we get reinforced see. at some point, Graham? Uh, right. Yeah. Eventually, you know, maybe 30 minutes go by while they kind of reorganize and, and Get things right. back well, I would ask for like directions to, you know, the command room or something, unless I remember them, and then I would. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you kind of remember the, you know, Lord Ragnar's audience chamber? Yeah, yeah. That's that's where I think I would probably go. I'd... Okay. Yeah. Well, during the thirty minutes that it's going to take them to be relieved. Yep. Uh, do I, uh, I mean, first I'm going to ask the other guy who captured one, you know, do you know somebody who speaks Goblin? You're asking another dwarf? Yeah, well, the guy who captured the other one. Obviously, he had the same thought as me. Maybe he actually knew someone who speaks yeah, Goblin. That's a good point. Goblin. It says, no one I know. All right, now I'm going to pick my own brain. You know, uh, there are obvious uh, wise dwarfs. The wise dwarves of the hill, the you know, the old people who have nothing left to do but to know things. They're the patriarchs. Uh, yeah, that's sort of, so. Picking my own brain, who's the uh, who's the the you know maybe the linguistiest or the most book read, uh, someone I could go seek out right away, <clears throat> get the ball rolling, so to speak. Well, there are six houses in the Gilbag stronghold. Uh -huh. And as far as you know, only one of the patriarchs might possibly speak goblinoid. Um, he speaks several languages. And he's also, he's not the oldest patriarch, but he's the meanest. All right. Now, did you said the other guy who captured a captain was Balak? Yep. Do I outrank him? Uh, you guys are kind of equal, all the you know, kind of military commanders are. Alright, uh, uh, <clears throat> I'll be like, uh, alright, why don't you and I go see, uh, what was his name? The Patriarch? Solid Snake. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> How about we do some live world building woo, with the. Woo. Orphan call, name roll. You can call him John Whistle. That'll work. No, 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 no. Um. Haverack. No, Volvo. 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 Man, everyone's Everybody's name. Fucking Bol something, yeah. B is a very prevalent word in the Dwarven alphabet. Is it? All right. Yep. There you go. So we're going with Volvo? Yep. All right, then. I'll, so I'll sort of nod, and I'll be like, all right, why don't you and I go see Balvo right away with these guys? Uh, with you know, There could be pertinent, crucial information that is time-sensitive. Um, he says, why? What do you think, uh, what do you, what do you think they know? Nah, Balvo is that, you know, he's, he's a mean fella, but he's the, of all the patriarchs, I think he speaks the most languages. He's got the highest chance of being able to talk to these rats. 
what are what are we hoping to learn? I mean, well, have you seen those tunnels? They weren't they weren't uh, made by tools, or or by any creature, and uh, and I don't know about you, your basement, but in my basement, they made a beeline for a secret room I didn't even know was there. I think something else is going on. Secret room. Yeah, there was a secret room in my own basement. And they knew it was there. Along with their mysterious tunneling abilities. And, right. and their, their strange weapons. Something is, something's afoot. Graham, is black powder a thing in your world? Theoretically. But Walzer wouldn't even know about it. Yeah, before. I know. I'm just, I'm just trying to like comprehend some stuff in my mind. Black powder is just like um, it's a chemical formula. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody who had any con concept of chemistry would probably be able to figure it out eventually. Okay, so it's not like it's not like coming into the world. It's sort of just if people know it, they know it sort of thing. It's just science, yeah. Science. Also, I don't think they would have been able to sneak a l series of explosions. Like, I think we would have heard the explosions as they slowly blew their way up into the I mountain. Know, I know, I'm just, I, it just, it's, I just, okay, it's just okay. a thought that popped into my mind, so I figured out. I was, sure, sure, you know, sure. Yeah. And he says, um, what was the last thing you asked? Oh, oh, I said I thought something's afoot, them. because I mentioned their strange yeah. actions and the fact that they're uh, more weaponized than usual, and we can't identify their method of tunneling. I think that, uh, and that they knew where to go. I think something's afoot, and we should interrogate these these rats. <clears throat> and he says, "I'll go. I'll go fetch Bolvo. You know, Bolvo's a patriarch of his house. All right, or you know, patriarch Bolvo. Right, yeah. And good uh, old Bolvo. Yeah, hardly knew him. Um, <laughs> he'll say, go and." Uh, you can bring these in. Uh, bring these in here, and he kind of motions to his avenue. The the uh, oh goodness, what's the other Daldoom? Ooh, that's a good name, yeah. Daldoom. That's the uh, that's it. that's the other that's one of the other houses. And uh, and Bafar's battalion has a num has a has a member of the Daldoom house defected from that one. Oh no! Yeah, I guess. You can defect from houses. Yeah. Scandalous. Yeah, I know. Mm. Anywho, that's beside the point. Um, so he says, bring them in here. I'll go fetch uh, Patriarch Bolvo. Is anyway. there a good room to set up? Like a place with a single lantern and a couple of chairs <laughs> and, a, and a table? No, but there's like a... Uh, so like the way the avenues are set up, there's kind of like a... Not like a reception area, but like a open area at, at the beginning. And then uh, basically doors that split off and he kind of uh, he leads you down to like a always in all these houses one of the first doors is the kind of military or you know armory right guard house uh, guard house cots that sort of thing so he says uh, yeah throw them in here I'll be right back alright I find a suitable room inside the guard house and I will tie them to chairs okay. so that they aren't a problem when they wake up Thirty minutes go by conveniently. So no, convenient. Just, just kidding. Yeah. Uh, about ten minutes go by, and uh, so Belak comes by, comes back, uh -huh. and he says, "I spoke to uh, Patriarch Bolvo." And cut uh, out there. Oh no, yeah, hang your back. Oh, did I? No, yeah. Didn't. So I spoke to Patriarch Bolvo, and. Uh, he wants you and these uh, these goblins to come come down to the uh, his home. Okay, so to the avenue. It, it takes me exactly ten minutes to finish tying them to the chair. So right as he says that, I'm done t t tying the knot <laughs> yeah, on the chair. Something like that. And I look up. Ah, slap my face. You're either very meticulous or you're fucking like handicapped when it comes to tying knots. <laughs> you're like. Uh, he doesn't have rope use. What do you want from him? Yeah, I don't have rope use. <laughs> he, he took ten on his rope use. <laughs> Those are all ten. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I guess I'll untie them. Or if these chairs are not fixed to the ground, I may take the chairs. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He he picks up the other chair with the with the goblin hanging off the end of it. 
Oh, the, okay, so where are... It's a wedding! Where da, are... Da, da, da. Oh, where are myself and Engelard during all this? Still waiting for reinforcements to yeah. be organized. Okay. I'll make sure that someone is is ready to tell them about where the interrogation is happening. Okay. Um, Who? Just somebody? Well, you said there were other guys sort of milling about in the command center. Well, in the, in the central hub, yeah. And eventually, you know, battalions start to come back from, from where they were and kind of cleaning out the, the dregs, the rest of them. And so, yeah, there's kind of guards milling about now. Your battalion eventually comes back. Full war and all those guys. Oh, hey. Uh, how's it going? And uh, they do a typical dwarven greeting where they grip your, where you grip each other's forearms and put a uh, hand on the shoulder. And, open and I say, look what we caught. I yeah. say, <laughs> how many pounds is this goblin? I want to be like, it's a, you know, the 20 pounder or whatever. Maybe 60. It's a 60 pounder, I say. He says, uh, yeah, that's chump's change. And he laughs. Oh, I don't see you with your goblin leader. He says, looks like we missed all the fun. I didn't have a chance. Ah, oh, well, uh, fun is a strange word. You know, that? did you know that there's a secret thing in our basement? <laughs> he says, is there a trail off? Secrets. What? Yeah, these goblins, right, they tunnel into our basement, and they go straight to a secret lab thing that is down there that I never knew about, and they're, they're rooting around. So, uh, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's what I'm going to find out. But this guy, I say, and I jostle the uh, commander. Unconscious. Okay. Yeah, unconscious. This sack of dead sack of potatoes. And then I'll say, remember those guys from the asylum with the undead and all that? Yeah, uh, who? Which ones? The, the humans, the annoying ones. The oh, ones yeah. Who are really into that, that druid guy. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. here. They're <laughs> watching our basement right now. Why don't you go down and relieve them and tell them to go meet us in Bulvo's room? Ha give them directions to how to. <laughs> yeah, go, go to Bulvo's room. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Give them directions to this house and uh, the avenue, and they'll find their way from there, I'm sure. I mean, they're only partially idiotic. All right, boss. You got it. Well, uh, I'll do All it. All right. And then while you're down there, you know, uh, don't open. There's a big scary door in that secret lab I mentioned. <laughs> don't open it. Uh, I doubt I would want to. Yeah, well, I did, did, what are the names of all my crew again? Grumpy, stumpy, lumpy. Yeah. <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking Jesus Christ. That that was way too easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> since, you, since you asked, I gotta find it. Oh. Yeah, well. <laughs> what have you done? Um, alright. Cool. Um, we'll be a minor payoff. Worry, Dave. Graham, just, I, just hold your horses. I want to know what their reaction is when they see Pike when they come down. Well, they're not there yet. Okay, your guys' name are Thor, Balvor, Balame, Belen, and Dalem. Belen, I say. I look at him. I'm like, yep. after I say about the door, I know how nosy you are. I know how curious. <laughs> you keep to yourself. He's the give, uh, him, give him the eye. Yeah, he's got your. Uh, he's got your. He's got the battle standard on a trident that he wields. And he's like, and he kind of holds it against himself defensively. Hey, you better hurt. All right. Hey, you know. Ah, he, he knows I love him. <laughs> uh, anyway, we, uh, I, I head with my quarry to Bolvo's room. Yep. Send my team to relieve uh, Walzer and Engelard and give them general directions to meet us for the interrogation. That's fine. Yeah, um... Walzer and Engelard eventually, um, a, a very familiar five dwarves come and find you downstairs in the conveniently located empty space. Sure. Um, I, yeah, I assumed I brought all the um, papers I found to read. Yeah, okay. so here's the scene. Let me set it for you. Engelard is in the corner reading. I'm throwing rocks up into the air and having Pike catch them. <laughs> so I'm I mean, basically playing. I mean, having Pike like uh, sting them with his tail like skeet shooting. Yes, yeah, that and catch him with his mouth and that whatever he, whatever he wants to do to sort of like 
get his eye in or whatever. And uh, I'm just doing that. <laughs> and basically, it's just me sitting down in on one side of the wall, just like lobbing rocks over to the other side. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, eventually these uh, dwarves come by through the through the jail corridor. Mm-hmm. <coughs> uh, Bulvor, if you recall, was the one who met you at the front door. Yeah. And so he's seen Pike before. Okay. Mm. So he doesn't bat an eyelash, but the other four kind of grow wide eyed and uh, kind of you know they they all actually wield two handed weapons, so they always have them kind of at the ready. Yeah. Sure. Oddly enough, and so they. Uh, they actually all kind of hold them out, you know, defensively, and they go, you know, well, some of them go, one of them is mute, but, um... Convenient. Yeah, some of them go, you know, like, Great Scott, what's that? Monster. Yeah. And then I stand up and I go, ah, finally, you're here to relieve us. What was that? Two hours? <laughs> uh, Volvo says, sorry, sorry about that, getting things sorted out, with goblins afoot. Uh, I see you met a few, and he kicks a goblin corpse in the side. <coughs> Careful now, they're pretty dirty. Um, yes, where do we go? I would like to get out of this underground place as soon as possible. He says, uh, Bafar took um, the goblin that you captured and took them to uh, House Daldoom. It's go uh, through the jail corridor, food storage, up the stairs, hang a left, hang a right, across the, across the central hub, through that hallway, all the way to the end. Okay, that seems easy enough. And uh, and then I mm. sort of wait for um, Englad to pack up his stuff, and I guess we head off. Yeah, I'm just going to, I guess, uh, if I have something to put the papers in, I'm going to put them in there. Although There's a satchel just on just just pike that you can them. put them in if you want. Yeah, I'll put them yeah. in there. Yeah, sure. And then I guess, then I guess I'm ready. Okay. Yeah, you guys uh, go, um, all of the dwarves kind of continue to stay defensively as Pike <laughs> walks past them. <laughs> yeah. Kind of kind of shuffle uh, around him. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, then then Bulvor, like, uh, slaps one of them, uh, you know, in the chest, like, don't be a baby. <laughs> 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 and, uh, yeah, you guys walk through the jail corridor, uh, you know, a rat scurries across the pathway that Pike stabs with its tail. And, yep. For no reason, because he's a pike. Um, yeah. He's hungry again. And I'm going. As we're walking, I'm just going to min. Like the um, what you call it? The ones I read out loud before. I would just tell um. Ah, no. Oh, sorry, Walzer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. God, I'm. I'll tell I'm Pike tired. exactly what I read on the papers. Not Walzer though. Yeah. Just yeah. Pike. Yeah. And uh, no Walz. I was going to tell. I was going to tell Walzer what I read on. The, um, on the first few papers that I actually read out loud to okay. all of us. Yeah. But, um, there's much you met. There's a few more of these papers, but they're all very... The man, Whoever wrote them is clearly insane. Well, I mean, I've seen my fair share of insane scribblings, and, uh, most of them I don't even pay that much attention to, but if you can make heads or tails of them, then go ahead. I'd love to hear your, what you come up with. I'll see what I'll see what I can do, but right now I'm not I'm not making much progress on this. Yeah. Um, the moment I can ride Pike, I will. By the way. Okay. Well, not indoors at all. Well, yeah. When we get out of the food storage, I assume. So. No, back back up to the top floor. Still, it's still only the ceiling still low to low to the ground technically. Oh, okay. I thought. Okay. Yeah, I imagine it was like sort of like you know, hey, I don't know what you call it, but you'd have like a underground, but it would be like. Outside of the house, that's what I imagine it would be like. But okay, no, it's all it's all covered. All right, well that's good then. Then I won't worry about that. But yeah, um, we do our best to sort of follow the navigation, follow the directions. Yeah. Um. So Buffar, whenever you get with um, Bel uh, yeah, Belloc, and you eventually make your way to like the main central hearth, or like the main l ruling hearth of uh, House Daldoom. Um, looks no different than the other ones. Dwarves are not one for, you know, uh, austere kind of decorations. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so they all, they all kind of look the same, even though one of them is the most prominent hearth, and that's the one of house, um, not house, that's the one of, uh, Balvo. Mm. 
right, right. Uh, Patriarch, the oldest dwarf, the oldest male dwarf. Yeah. Um, essentially, he lives there with um, his wife, his wife's mother. Very old, decrepitly old. Super old. Super old. Technically, the major. They're selling chocolate. <laughs> is it is it like so <laughs> old that it's more old. amazing that she's still alive? Old or is it like? No, it's just that dwarves live a long time, and yeah, she's old. She can't really do much. Old for a dwarf is really old for a human. Okay. Obviously, you know, like three hundred. <clears throat> Right. And, uh, yes, she's technically the matriarch of this house. You know, the matriarch and the patriarch don't have to be married. It's just the oldest woman and the oldest man. Matriarchs uh, have power? What? Do the matriarchs have any political power? Um, no, it's more like um, the men teach the men and the women teach the women. Ah, right, so she's in charge of the women? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Volvo is a basically a you know, fat, gray-haired dwarf with um, his beard is in a basically, you know, long kind of flowing waves, no braids. Uh-huh. He's, he's so high up the rankings he doesn't need braids. Yeah, he's the, he's at the top, essentially. Yeah. Doesn't have, doesn't have any braids. They don't wear braids. Um, what type of beard oil like does his, he use? That's not important. <laughs> Got to do Oh, so now you don't want to do it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right. Continue. Yeah, so eventually, um, so Belek comes in, and uh, he kind of uh, introduces you to, you know, formally to Volvo. I do whatever formal, uh, you know. Well, uh, typically you grasp forearms, suppose, you know, opposite forearms, and then you uh, put your other hand on their shoulder, uh, right shoulder for good news, um, left shoulder for grim tidings. All right, and what, like, gently caress the beard when you're not sure? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hand, yeah, all right. Hand, hand in the face. I guess I'll go with good news. All right. And he says, um, he says, what's the meaning of all this? These goblins, they're, they're not typical. They're outfitted with uh, well-kept weapons, organized. Not they had well some kept strange. Weapons, just so you know, I, I probably would have told you that it was. Um, they had. It wasn't weapons that were made. There were weapons that were um, secured. Scavenged. Looted. Yeah. They're organized. They've got a strange tunneling technique that can't be identified, and they knew about secret rooms in the house in the basements of several of our houses. Uh, something's going on. And we figured that you might be able to speak Goblin with your wide range of uh, knowledges and help us to interrogate these commanders of the Goblin squads. And uh, the man says, Yes, well, it doesn't appear the uh, Goblins are going anywhere. Go ahead and set them over there and motion to do a corner. All right, I'll I'll set them up. Yeah, and so does uh you know Bellex. That's the one that he was carrying up on the on the corner next to each other. And uh, he says, "But what I'm really interested in is secret room." Yes, we'll have to figure out the meaning of says, this. Says they knew about was, its existence. What was inside? Uh, <clears throat> well, I'm I'm not really uh keen to these matters. There was uh, books in one section. Uh, appeared to be some sort of uh, alchemy equipment in another. And Magic, there was a, you say? There was a third door, I say, uh, with evil markings. Uh, uh, sinister in nature. We barred it, and, and I've uh, sent my, my squad to, to guard it and make sure that nobody opens it. Mm-hmm. And he says, yes, interesting, stroking his beard. Um, he says, I'm a bit rusty with my goblinoid. I assume he doesn't have that many people to converse with. So. Yeah. 
He says, what, what exactly are you hoping to discover? Well, uh, with my experience in the field, uh, my instincts are telling me that these goblins, they're working under, under someone, under something. Some uh, organizing force other than themselves uh, sent them here with the knowledge of uh, those secret rooms and helped them to breach our defenses. Uh, you know, whatever information you can weasel out of them about how they managed to pull this off, I think will start to point us in the direction of whoever is actually behind this. I don't believe these rat bastards could do this themselves. And he says, uh, wake them up. All right, I, I find a bucket of cold water or something. <laughs> Conveniently placed bucket of water. Got it. Poof! Then I splash them. Okay. Nice bucket challenge. Yeah, one of them. Uh, so they one of one of them, the one that you kind of splashed, wakes up. Goes, uh, you know, says something frantic and goblinoid. And then I uh, expectantly to Bulvo. Uh, yeah, and uh, Bulvo. Try to look menacing, by the way. You know, sort of like interrogation stuff. You know, fist, fist in hand. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I got it. I, I, I see what's happening. So, um, you know, I, uh, I, I don't have any material for actually speaking goblinoid. So, Balvo says something to the goblin, and they, they have a bit of a frenzied conversation. And Balvo eventually says to you, uh, whenever I, whenever I snap my fingers, I want you to, um, punch him across the mouth. All right, thumbs up. Okay. I'm so ready for this. All right. So he, he says something to him. He The goblin says something else defiantly. Um, Balvo says something else, and then he snaps his fingers. All right, I, I hook him. Uh, I don't go too hard. I don't want to knock him out. I, I okay. just want to go for, like, you know, a teeth blow, something that will yeah. knock some teeth loose. Yeah, a tooth falls out across the room. The uh, the women leave the room. There were women here? Yeah, the the oldest woman who was there. Oh, they were they were spectating. They didn't leave already. They were sort of like, I want to see this. Yeah, something like that. Dwar women, dwarven women are hardy. Yeah. All right. He says he says uh, another piece. He snaps his fingers. He punches him across the mouth the other way. You know, he he says a few more pieces, et cetera, et cetera. Eventually, um, he says, wake up the other one. Can I have retroactively woken up the first one already? Uh, sure. So they could watch? Yeah, no, I get you. Um, okay, he, he says a few things to the to the other goblin and uh, says something to the first goblin. And um, basically he eventually comes to you and he says, uh, come, 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 come with me to the other room. All right. like you too. I, I follow. Yeah, you I give him, like. I give him like the... the, the I stare him down one last time before I leave the room. You know, I give him the the death blow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do the man whole man like you know two fingers to the eyeballs and then you point him exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And you uh, you eventually come to a room. Uh, Balvo closes the door, and he says, "The goblin says that he was working with the humans." I should have known. I never trusted the tall folk. Never have. And at that mm. moment, Walzer walks in. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At that well, time, uh, <laughs> at that time, Walzer and Engelard see you know come across a room that's got two goblins tied up in the corner. Now I'll respond to Bolvo. I'll say, uh, <laughs> well, I've been out patrolling the roads, right? Would I have slightly more experience with humans than say? Other dwarves? Most definitely so. All right, I'll be like, uh, well, the humans are fractured and factionalized. They're not unified in any way. He could be working with any humans. It could be a random human. Uh, we need to be, we need more They're specific. They're all untrustworthy. Yeah, I totally agree concerned. with you, I say. But we need to know exactly who we're dealing with out of all of the humans. Uh, it could be any of them, but there's no way it's all of them. And we don't just want to go counterattacking any random village. We need uh, a location or an identifying feature, uh, something, something specific. Ollie would say that he was uh, he was loyal to his cause. 
Mm. Despite uh, being a dirty rat goblin. Mm. Interesting. Loyalty and goblins. Strange. And he says, Perhaps we should uh, switch tactics here if we want to get more information. Uh, punching them is uh, getting some, but maybe if we offer them something, freedom, uh, painless death, uh, perhaps they'd be more willing to give us <laughs> <coughs> And Bafar falls over dead. Um, <laughs> perhaps they'd be more willing to give us specifics. And he says, uh, let's, go, let's, go, let's go back in there. All right, we will return to the room to find Walzer and Angelhart. Is Pike with me, or is he outside? Uh, he's nearby, okay. outside, something, yeah. Okay. You guys mm -hmm. just walked in. It sounds sort of like, I, you know, in my mind, this is a, it's a home. It's not big enough for him. Um, yeah. Well, it's big enough for him. Um, it, it, all the <laughs> place is kind of structured very similarly. Oh, okay. Okay, you guys awkwardly stare at each other. Hi, we're we're just in the process of integra in interrogating this goblin scum. Oh. Interesting. Did you find anything dead. out? Yeah, so far he's told Bolvor here that they're working with humans, although he hasn't specified which ones. Okay. I mean, that's there's a lot of us. <laughs> yeah. That's who I mean. are you? <laughs> uh, well, my name is. Uh, my name is Walza, and uh, this is my good friend Engelard. And I will Engelard interject. Is reading one of those papers? Is one reading one of the papers he brought along? Yeah. I'll interject and say they were key in defending my home's basement cellar from the goblin incursion. They are previous trusted allies of the dwarves. Do either of you two speak the goblin tongue? Of course not. Why would we speak that drivel? I never saw a point point to learn it, so And uh so okay, so the the dwarf kind of uh, sidles up next to the goblin the side up that he was already talking to. And they, they exchange a few words. He uh you know, he makes like a money motion with his hands, like rubbing his fingers together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then he points to the the two he points to Angelard and Walzer, asking them question asking the goblin questions. He says, uh, you know, he begin, he strokes his beard again, listening to what the goblin has to say. Uh, can I do a trouble sense here? Sure. Just want to make sure yeah, he's I'm not, like, pinning us. <clears throat> and I would do something like empathy. 23. Actually, since I keep forgetting about this... Oh, hold on a second. That seems like trouble, Walzer. <laughs> okay. No trouble. Um. It, is there a way that I can do like an SOS or something like that to um. Pike. Well, I. Well, I was gonna uh, ask. Yeah. You can. Well, can I ask that yeah. since we keep forgetting about this, about Ingolard's little um special empathy thing that he has. W what's that? Um. He's, remember, got a, he's got a trait, a, a special trait. Okay. Yeah. That means he's very empathic. Um, can it assist me in anything for figuring out the general feel of this uh, current situation, I guess, uh, between it, those two? It'll be a raw intuition check. Hmm. Raw right. intuition. So what do I roll again for that? Intuition. Exactly 1D... Plus 7. Yeah, all right, just making sure. Yeah. You guys both sense trouble. This seems bad for your humans. Mm. All right, well, I, I want to just do, like, a oh. SOS ping to Pike. Okay. Um, I, I can't, like, I guess it's more like, a, you know, um, oh, shit, Timmy fell down, Timmy, like, Timmy's in trouble or something like that. You know, that sort of thing, you know. Like, you well, get, do you like, want a, him to come charging in here? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, I... I I'm just going to basically um stop reading the papers um maybe stuff them in um stuff them some somewhere that I'm not going to still keep them and um maybe start fingering um 
keeping my hand closer to um my hilt, the hilt of um, my sword. Sure. Okay. The uh, so I mean obviously Pike's not very far away. He comes right away, coming sure. in here. Yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's more more subtle than that. There's, he's not that big. It's not a T Rex. He, 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 he didn't he didn't crack the the stone on the way through. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then the dwarf just. I mean, it's getting pretty crowded in here now. The dwarf, the uh, main dwarf says, what, "Monster, what is that?" You calm yourself, Attack his man. Pet. Attack now. It's his pet, I say, with a droll attitude. And uh, he says, "A pet." Yeah, he's a uh, he's a completely tame beast. I saw him eat at least twenty goblins. That didn't sound very tame to me. Well, it was under his orders to eat goblins. Well, I mean, helped hey. us out. Everybody get out of here. Everybody leave. Thumbs up. All right. Except you, pointing to, uh, to Buffar and Bell. Okay, I stop and don't leave. You humans, get out of here with that thing. I think not. Uh, it's his right house, here. I say to Walzer. You have no right to be here if he doesn't invite you. Leave. I, I, I'm, here, just... I'm here for a particular reason. And if you're going to start pinning this attack on humans, then... We haven't told you any of that, really. I mean, you're getting trouble sensed, but... Yeah, it's going off my gut, and that's, that's okay. why I'm saying that. And also, we didn't... They also... Mentioned something about um. Yeah. They also already, you guys already saw, already mentioned that they said that the uh, goblin was working with humans. So. Yeah. I might not. I'm, I might not be able to speak goblin, but I'm not a goddamn idiot. Well, so I'm staying here, and then we're not leaving. Yeah, but you're until... starting something by not leaving. Yeah. I am you're making it way worse for your case if you're worried about blaming humans if you're going to suddenly start invading people's homes with well, your I dragon. Was, and I'm just going to... I mean... I guess well, I'm just I going mean, to start leaving. Is... There's no reason to... I mean, this basically would get me out of the um, potentially dangerous situation if he's going to start um, blaming humans anyways. And we're not going to get much further if they turn on us, Engelod. Well, we'll stay... We'll try. We'll aggravate them. Won't actually help us. He says, "Belak, Buffar, bring the goblins. We'll see what Lord Ragnar has to say about this." Sure thing, boss. I will okay. grab a goblin and start bringing him. And the whole way, I'm gonna give him the eyes. Like you better not lie. Yeah. You may. You may want to knock him out again. Oh well. Uh, uh, no, I don't want him to be cloudy. Um, they're tied to a chair. Like, what are they gonna do? Right. Probably make okay. noises. Whatever, and, uh, that's fine. So what? What? Um, you know. And he says, you know, Belak, lead me out. Belak kind of goes first, and uh, he kind of follows Belak, and Buffar kind of follows behind, right? Yeah, this is a good time for a break. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Break done. Uh, well, we're gonna take a quick break. Uh, maybe two, three minutes, and then we'll be back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be going into hour number two of four. And, uh, yeah, there's more to come, definitely. So stick around. All right.